Today is June the 27th. Today, we begin the study of Isaiah the prophet. We're attempting to read through the Bible in a year following a chronological order because of that. When we come to Hezekiah and the attack of Assyria, it's good for us to take time now and turn to the prophet Isaiah and see how he prophesied in Hezekiah's father's kingdom, King Ahaz, and then later in Hezekiah's kingdom. Now, yesterday we read 2 Kings 18 to 19. That is virtually identical with Isaiah chapter 36 to 39. Uh, Isaiah 36 to 39 adds a few extra poems, hymns, and such, but by and large, it's word for word the same. Isaiah wrote both. Isaiah wrote the section in 2 Kings. Isaiah wrote, of course, the book of Isaiah. It's worthwhile for us to examine the structure of Isaiah. The first five chapters tells us of the present and the future of the kingdom of Judah, God's people. Uh, it is suffering now, but there will come a time when it's restored. Isaiah 6 tells us how it's restored, primarily through the ministry of the servant Isaiah. Uh, the servant Isaiah comes and uh, answers God's call to share his message. Then from chapters 7 to 39, it all deals with who do we trust? We don't trust in Assyria. We don't trust in Egypt. We don't trust in Babylon. We trust in God because he is worthy of our trust. And then chapters 40, to 66 tells us how uh, Judah, God's people, will return from an exile in which they find themselves. Years later, but Isaiah is prophesying to that future people and promising them that God still remains faithful. Enjoy today as we read the first three chapters of Isaiah. Isaiah 1 to 3, New Living Translation. Isaiah 1. The vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear me, you heavens, listen, earth, for the Lord has spoken. I reared children and brought them up, but they've rebelled against me. The ox knows its master and the donkey its owner's manger. But Israel doesn't know. My people don't understand. Woe to the sinful nation, a people whose guilt is great, a brood of evildoers, children given to corruption. They've forsaken the Lord. They've spurned the Holy One of Israel. They've turned their backs on him. Why should you be beaten anymore? Why do you persist in rebellion? Your whole head is injured, your whole heart afflicted. From the sole of your foot to the top of your head, there is no soundness, only wounds and welts and open sores, not cleansed or bandaged or soothed with olive oil. Your country is desolate, your cities burned with fire. Your fields are being stripped by foreigners right before you, laid waste as when overthrown by strangers. Daughter Zion is left like a shelter in a vineyard, like a hut in a cucumber field, like a city under siege. Unless the Lord Almighty had left us some survivors, we would have become like Sodom, we would have been like Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me, says the Lord? I have more than enough of burnt offerings, the rams, the fat of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, Who's asked this of you, this trampling of my courts? Stop bringing meaningless offerings. 
Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. Your new moon feasts and your appointed festivals I hate with all my being. They become a burden to me. I'm weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I'm not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash and make yourself clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Come now. Let us settle the matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you're willing and obedient and you eat the good things of the land, but if you resist and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. See how the faithful city has become a prostitute. She once was full of justice. Righteousness used to dwell in her. But now, murderers. Your silver has become dross. Your choice wine is diluted with water. Your rulers are rebels, partners with thieves. They all love bribes and chase after gifts. They don't defend the cause of the fatherless. The widow's case doesn't come before them. Therefore, the Lord, the Lord Almighty, the Mighty One of Israel declares, I will vent my wrath on my foes and avenge myself on my enemies. I will turn my hand against you. I will thoroughly purge away your dross and remove all your iniquities. I'll restore your leaders as in days of old, your rulers as at the beginning. Afterward, you'll be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion will be delivered with justice, her penitent ones with righteousness. But rebels and sinners will both be broken, and those who forsake the Lord will perish. You'll be ashamed because of the sacred oaks in which you've delighted. You'll be disgraced because of the gardens that you've chosen. You'll be like an oak with fading leaves, like a garden without water. The mighty man will become tender, and his work a spark. Both will burn together with no one to quench the fire. Isaiah 2 This is what Isaiah, son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills, and all the nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He'll teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He'll judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. You, Lord, have abandoned your people, the descendants of Jacob. They are full of superstitions from the east. They practice divination like the Philistines and embrace pagan customs. Their land is full of silver and gold. There is no end to their treasures. Their land is full of horses. There is no end to their chariots. Their land is full of idols. They bow down to the work of their hands, to what their fingers have made. So people will be brought low and everyone humbled. Don't forgive them. Go into the rocks, hide in the ground from the fearful presence of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty. The eyes of the arrogant will be humbled. Human pride brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. The Lord Almighty has a day in store for all the proud and lofty, for all that's exalted, and they will be humbled. For all the cedars of Lebanon, tall and lofty, all the oaks of Bashan, for all the towering mountains and all the high hills, for every lofty tower and every fortified wall, for every trading ship and every stately vessel, 
The arrogance of man will be brought low and human pride humbled. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day and the idols will totally disappear. People will flee to caves in the rocks and to holes in the ground from the fearful presence of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty when he rises to shake the earth. In that day, people will throw away to the moles and bats their idols of silver and idols of gold, which they made to worship. They'll flee to caverns in the rocks and to the overhanging crags from the fearful presence of the Lord and the splendor of his majesty when he rises to shake the earth. Stop trusting in mere humans who have but a breath in their nostrils. Why hold them in esteem? Isaiah 3. See now the Lord, the Lord Almighty, is about to take from Jerusalem and Judah both supply and support, all supplies of food and all supplies of water, the hero and the warrior, the judge and the prophet, the diviner and the elder, the captain of fifty and the man of rank, the counselor, skilled craftsman, and clever enchanter. I will make mere youths their officials. Children will rule over them. People will oppress each other, man against man, neighbor against neighbor. The young will rise up against the old, the nobody against the honored. A man will seize one of his brothers in his father's house and say, You have a cloak. You be our leader. Take charge of this heap of ruins. But in that day he'll cry out, I have no remedy. I have no food or clothing in my house. Don't make me the leader of the people. Jerusalem staggers. Judah is falling. Their words and deeds are against the Lord, defying his glorious presence. The look on their faces testifies against them. They parade their sin like Sodom. They don't hide it. Woe to them. They have brought disaster upon themselves. Tell the righteous it'll be well with them, for they will enjoy the fruit of their deeds. Woe to the wicked, disaster is upon them. They'll pay back for what their hands have done. Youths oppress my people, women rule over them. My people, your guides lead you astray. They turn you from the path. The Lord takes his place in court. He rises to judge the people. The Lord enters into judgment against the elders and leaders of my people. It's you who've ruined my vineyard, the plunder from the poor is in your houses. What do you mean by crushing my people and grinding the faces of the poor, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. The Lord says, the women of Zion are haughty, walking along with outstretched necks, flirting with their eyes, strutting along with swaying hips, with ornaments jingling on their ankles. Therefore, the Lord will bring sores on the heads of the women of Zion. The Lord will make their scalps bald. In that day, the Lord will snatch away their finery, the bangles and headbands and crescent necklaces, the earrings and bracelets and veils, the headdresses and anklets and sashes, the perfume bottles and charms, the signet rings and nose rings, the fine robes and the capes and cloaks, the purses and mirrors, and the linen garments and tiaras and shawls. Instead of fragrance, there will be a stench. Instead of a sash, a rope. Instead of well-dressed hair, baldness. Instead of fine clothing, sackcloth. Instead of beauty, branding. Your men will fall by the sword, your warriors in battle. The gates of Zion will lament and mourn, destitute, she will sit on the ground. Like, follow, and subscribe to the Steve Ocho on whatever podcast you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we see the parable of the vineyard.